Good morning. We woke up at about 7.10 in the morning so that we could take the tram from the city center to Antalya Airport. To get the tram, it was super easy. We just bought one of those uh, cards that you can load up with money and we put enough on for four rides two for both of us to come to the airport and two for both of us to get back into the city center later on today and the tram takes you right into the airport we are at the airport but we're not here for flying so if we're not flying then why are we here well we're going to pick up a car which is going to definitely be an interesting experience i believe that we're going to be getting a manual transmission car i haven't driven stick in about six or seven years and doing it on the opposite side of the road to how I learned is going to be really, really interesting. But uh, it will be our passport to go and see some really interesting places today. So we are planning on going to Cide and Aspendos, which are in the Antalya region. Should be hopefully about half hour trips wherever we go. So let's crack on. pickup went okay. The guy from the rental company brought the car around to the international departures and then he just took our passport information, our driver's license information, and we did a walkthrough of the car. The only thing that was a little strange was the fact that we booked this card with American Express because they offer complimentary driver's insurance, I guess, or it's included. And he said that that did not work in this country of Turkey. And so we had to buy 50 euros worth of insurance in addition to what we'd already paid for the car. I don't know if that was a scam or if that was accurate, but basically we've just had to pay 50 euros for car insurance. And then we also had to put a 150 euro deposit down on the car, which will be returned given that we don't get any like traffic fines or anything like that. Either way, we are on our way and Nick is doing a great job of driving manual so far. So let's go to Espendos. Now that we've made it to Espendos. In one piece, thankfully. Tell me what your thoughts are about driving in Turkey? Actually, not too bad. I think I was like imagining some kind of horror story, but actually it was okay. It's kind of interesting though, because with the hard shoulder, obviously as far as we go, then that's an absolute no-go. You should not be driving in there, but if it comes to any kind of traffic jam here, then they kind of use it as a, I don't want to be in this queue, so therefore I'm gonna get there faster lane. So um, that was a bit interesting wasn't expecting that but I think the only other thing is that the speed limits are not immediately obvious either so I was kind of guessing a lot but no I think for all intents and purposes though then it's been all right so far let's hope that it continues to be that way the tickets were 200 lira each and so 400 lira I think comes to about 30 dollars Canadian maybe just under that and you can pay by cash or card here in fact we found that at most major tourist attractions you can actually pay by card despite the fact that Turkey is a very cash-based society in general. This is the remains of the stadium, which is where all of the sporting events would have taken place. And unlike the famous Espendo Theater, which we'll go see later, this does not seem to be as well preserved. When people come to Aspandos, then the main thing that they all want to see is the theatre. But the 200 lira that we've spent each in order to get in here, as I hope you've seen, gets you to see so much more than just that. 
there really was a very large city. Apparently it used to have about 20,000 inhabitants here. So I hope that that would give you a sense of the scale. But if that doesn't, then what is behind me should. I have never seen a ruined aqueduct that is this large. Also, the weird thing is, and this has been the same with Ephesus as well, but Ephesus had like an inner harbour. This is meant to be a port city. The water is multiple kilometres that way. How did that work? This is our first view of Aspendos's crown jewel, the Roman theater. between 160 and 180 AD in the time of Marcus Aurelius and it was the largest theatre in the whole of the Asia Minor region of the Roman Empire. But you're probably wondering to yourself, why is this so well preserved? Well, it turns out that in the 13th century, one of the sultans actually used the area of Aspendos as the location of their summer house and so for that then they decided to take it upon themselves to restore this entire thing more or less back to its original glory and it's at the point that even now performances are actually still being held here there's even a sound stage right over there in the middle and there's even scenery that's all set up here so clearly this is one of those that really has to the test of time with some handy restoration I would also like to declare I am sweating buckets and that is mostly because one, it is about 33 degrees out, but also we have been going up a lot of hills. The good news about those hills is that they are worth it. The views that you end up getting are things like the aqueduct of this theater and a lot of the rest of the ancient city is definitely worth the climb. Yeah, for sure. I really enjoyed spending time here in Espendos. It was a total surprise that it was a whole city that we got to see I thought it was just going to be the theater but it's just a smaller scale of Pompeii and Ephesus and it's not as well preserved as those places in the sense that there are no mosaics or frescoes left but there are a substantial amount of walls and buildings left most notably the basilica the aqueduct and of course this roman theater we're going to spend just a little bit of extra time enjoying the shade and then i think we're going to head on to another ancient city which is in the town of cedar <laughs> When we first came to Turkey, we were having a casual browse around the supermarkets to see what might be interesting to us. And we'd earmarked these things and we're just like, oh yeah, we're sure that they're going to be everywhere else in Turkey. So no problem. We won't get it right now because we don't need it. But let's get it another point. These things have been like gold dust. They are practically impossible to find. But whenever you do, then apparently it is something to celebrate. So these are lemon cheesecake flavored biscuits and the instant we saw them we just went oh we gotta give those a go so now 10 days into being in turkey then we're finally gonna give it a try so here we go oh slightly melted heat of the car yep damn it car what do they look like they look like this there's a little bit of cream and then the rest of it is just biscuit okay there goes nothing Oh my god, these are so good. Was it worth the wait? Mm-hmm. I am so glad that we found these again. This is amazing. Imagine a cheesecake where the proportion is more towards the biscuit base instead. That's what these are. It's perfect. This is what one that's not melted looks like. Mmm. Oh my god. This is like key lime pie, but lemon instead. That is so good. Okay, now I have energy to go out and explore C-Day. Let's do it. 
This is an ancient Roman fountain, and my first impression is that they're doing a lot of restoration on these ruins. you can probably guess this is another ancient theater definitely not the same level of restoration as we saw in Espendos but I think generally speaking with most of this town then restoration work is being done right now so curious to see how it all winds up see behind us there is a lovely beach here in Cide. It is a small little resort town that just happens to have these ancient ruins scattered throughout it. They're primarily along one major street that you can't miss but it's just interesting that this is free. It's not like an archaeological site like Aspendos was. You can just wander around the town and see all of these ancient ruins. I think the interesting thing alongside that is that we're just walking past houses and streets and restaurants and hotels and it seems like there's still a lot of stuff they're uncovering. They're still excavating, they're still trying to restore the ancient side of this little town and it's amazing because really it's definitely a work in progress but it's exciting to think what it could look like in the next few years. And I'm curious to know if this is more of a recent discovery, because I do think that when all of this is restored and excavated, the fact that you combine it with it being a beach town, it could end up being popular like Bodrum. This is the most famous ruin in Cide. It is called the Temple of Apollon. been exploring sea day for about an hour and we have just found a shaded tree and a friendly cat and we're gonna have a picnic lunch we are driving the rental car back to the airport now or I should say Nick is and we have to return it with the same amount of gas so we stopped and the gas attendants were speaking German all I can say is, thank goodness Nick speaks German, <laughs> otherwise we would have been absolutely lost. I think to get about half a tank it cost 430 lira, so about 35 Canadian dollars. Yeah. So not too bad, but what did you think of the day? I had a lovely time, yeah. I think, um, like obviously we have had a precedent in that we have been able to see um, a lot of ruins already, but I think with Aspendos and the theatre in particular was a real highlight. Um, I've never seen anything that was quite that well restored. And um, with Sea Day, it's really charming, um, but it does, I think we've alluded to the fact that it just feels like a work in progress. Um, so, like, once they actually sort of sort out the restoration work on all of the ruins and stuff, then I can't wait to see like, how it ends up looking. Um, but yeah, I think the only downside to see that though is that they already know that they're an in-demand tourist location. So pretty much you can only go in, enjoy the free ruins and attractions and things like that, and then everything else is going to price you out the market because like there's nothing that's even in Turkish lira in terms of the prices though. It's all euros. So um, when you kind of consider that, really, then 
it's worth treading lightly, but that said, it's still, as an experience, a really cool thing. Two differing experiences, but still worth it, and it's also just been nice to drive around for a little bit, do something a bit different. Yeah, I think it was nice to have the freedom of a car today. And I would say that today exceeded my expectations in the sense that I really thought Espendos was just the theater. And I thought that Cide was just the temple of Apollon. But the fact that we've actually got to see so much more than that in each city has been really fun. As you alluded to, Cide would be incredible to vacation in. They already know they have great beaches and they have ruins so they've jacked the prices and it's the first time that we've seen it where prices have been displayed in euros as opposed to turkish lira but a hundred percent recommend a day trip from antalya out to see these two cities most definitely good morning from dudin park Today is a travel day for us. We'll actually be going from Antalya to Borem Cappadocia on an overnight bus, but we couldn't leave Antalya without seeing Dudin Waterfalls. Now, there are two parts to Dudin Waterfalls, the Lower Falls and the Upper Falls. We have come to the Lower Falls because they are far closer to the city of Antalya. But all the same, it was still about a 45 to 50 minute bus ride to get outside of the old town. So if you are staying around there and you want to come here, then do bear that in mind. Yeah, and it's a very easy bus journey to Dudin Park. That's the stop where you get off. Yep. And then you can just walk through it. And you were saying that this river is part of Dudin Falls? Yep, based on how rapidly the water is flowing under us right now, I would be absolutely astounded if this isn't actually what leads straight to the waterfalls. So from like the upper falls to the lower falls? Yes. Okay, let's go take a look. That was the Lower Duden Waterfalls. Pretty spectacular. I'd never seen a waterfall that went directly from a river over a cliff face directly into the sea. So that was definitely novel and absolutely stunning views and things like that. I think in comparison to maybe some of the other waterfalls that we've seen, like in the pizza, for example, when we were in Croatia, then I think perhaps because of that, that kind of set our expectations to maybe expect a lot more. Because really, aside from the waterfalls, which don't get me wrong, are fantastic, there wasn't really a lot else. There were a few like little touristy shops, there were some guys offering to photograph you with some parrots if you really wanted to do that for whatever reason. Um, There's some cafes and restaurants you could stop at. Yeah, but really beyond that, like if you want to kind of make it like a a half day or a full day's experience then you're really gonna struggle to do that by comparison like you could have a picnic in the park that's here yeah so you could spend some time like around sunset when it's cooler having mm -hmm. dinner kind of thing yeah but just looking at the waterfalls you're probably looking at about a 15 or 20 minute experience Exactly, and I think maybe we'd kind of built it up a little bit more than we thought, especially considering the fact that it took us about an hour or so to get here, just because the bus got caught in a few traffic jams. So if you're going to do kind of like a two hour round trip, then perhaps it's best to plan a little bit extra to do around these parts of the city. Yeah, the waterfall itself is very pretty, just as pretty as the ones in Plitvis, but there's just the one here. Whereas in Plitvis, there are so many. And I guess we also just didn't plan the day right, as in we're not hungry for lunch yet, so we're not having a picnic. But I'm grateful we came because yeah. they were so pretty. Yeah. And public transport here is very cheap, so 
doesn't really matter that we spent the money coming here or the time either. We have nothing else to do today. So yeah. it was totally worthwhile. Yeah, fundamentally it's still an enjoyable experience, but just don't expect to be able to spend the entire day here, that's all. Yeah, we want to give you a realistic picture so you can plan your days better yeah. and decide what you want to do. Exactly. As for what we want to do with the rest of our day though, it's kind of up in the air. Let's see what we get up to in the end. absolutely delicious. I ended up having chicken dinner in a sandwich. Meanwhile, Rachel had, I think, three kefters in a sandwich, both of which we can both agree were wonderful. And yeah, honestly, out of all of the street food stands and everything else that we've been able to see, that I think this has been the cheapest in terms of getting your dinner or kefta fixed. So even in the face of Turkish inflation, then you can definitely still get your value for money here. Yeah, that was... 65 Turkish lira, so under five dollars. Insanely good value. We haven't really got a lot else planned for today. I think we're just going to try and sort out some additional admin and all of that kind of stuff and just while away some hours before we get onto our bus this evening. So with that, until next time, take care. And keep smiling.